Guys, we're gonna bake today. This is a little different. We're making Easter pie or pizza gaina or pizza rustica. Here's all the ingredients. This is a great one. Let's get into it right now. I have prosciutto, salami, and mortadella. Need about a cup of each of these, but you can use other meats if you want. Just dice this as well. Basically, we're gonna have two things to this recipe. We're gonna do a dough and we're gonna do a filling. For our dough, we have three and a half cups of flour or 450 grams or one pound. We're gonna have a third of a cup of milk in our dough, one teaspoon of sugar and one teaspoon of fine sea salt, two sticks of unsalted butter. You wanna keep this cold, so you could just turn it into cubes like I have and then just stick it in your fridge. Whenever you make a crust, you wanna have cold butter. You can even put it in your freezer for like 20 minutes. And then two eggs in here. The other seven eggs are gonna go in our filling. We also have one egg to coat the top, but don't worry about that right now. We have a bunch of meats and cheeses. You can really do whatever you want here, guys. I'm being serious. You don't have to do it the way I did it. You can mix and match. If you say you don't can't find something, feel free to do it. A lot of recipes you'll come across online will say to use basket cheese, and that cheese is really only available in Italian specialty stores. Basically, not even now, you gotta wait like another week where they start bringing it in because they know everybody's making this dish then for, for Easter day. The one cheese I would really recommend that you use is regards. And then I have two pounds of that right here. Mortadella, I have a cup of that. I have a cup of Genoa salami. I have a cup of prosciutto. One cup basically of diced mozzarella. This sharp provolone is delicious in it. So I would, I would put like an intense cheese in there. And then another intense cheese is Pecorino Romano. And then you get like the gooiness from the mozzarella. That's really, really nice. And I put in about half a teaspoon of nutmeg into my pizza gaina. You might not see a lot of people do that, but I just think it's great. The first thing we need to do right now is make our dough and get it in the fridge. You need at least an eight cup food processor to do this. I'm basically at capacity right now for, for this pound of flour here. Should have bought a bigger one. All right, and you put your dry ingredients in here. You have your three and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of fine sea salt in there. I'm gonna pulse this together right now. And that just distributed the salt and the sugar with the flour. All right, that was about 20 seconds. Let's check it out. And if you have like, you know, really huge pieces of butter like this, you gotta cut it a little bit more in there. And you know, it'll work. Sometimes it just takes a little bit. And then, you know, you can do this outside of here too. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You could take this into onto a big cutting board or something like that and kind of fold your egg in. I'm just gonna do it this way. Two eggs, and then I have a third of a cup of milk here. Just use like about half of this to start. And if you need more, depending on if you have enough, how big your eggs are, how much liquid is in there, you can add the rest. You just needed the dough to come together enough. Third of a cup of milk, that's how much I used in the last batch for the exact same thing, but I always like to just not, you don't, if you don't need it all, you don't have to use it. I have an 18 by 24 inch plastic cutting board right here. This makes it really easy. It prevents you from making just a huge mess. I find that anything smaller than this, the dough, all these crumbs are just going all over the side. And you know, if you got granite, granite countertop, just do it straight on there. Just make sure it's clean. That just smells like a really nice pie crust. You just wanna bring it into like a ball state and if you have to turn it over at all and knead it, just do it for just a bit. Just kind of bring the crumbs in and let them all become a part of the ball here. So we're not gonna measure this too much. I'm just taking two thirds and one third. It needs to go in the fridge for an hour before you can work with it. I just cracked all these eggs and I cracked them on me, so if you see my shirt all stuck together in about 20 minutes, that's why. And here's the two pounds of regards right there. And we're gonna put those eggs in there. Seven eggs. Okay, so I have a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I love it in here. I think it's really, really nice and a lot of recipes don't have it. And then I'm gonna do about a half teaspoon of black pepper. You know, if you do use like spicy soprasada in here, maybe you maybe you back off on the pepper. And then we're just gonna whisk this together. We're gonna beat those eggs and whip the regatta. 
So when you think you did a good enough job, and I think I did a good enough job here, add all your meats, cheeses in. It doesn't have to be any particular order. It's been about an hour in the fridge. Maybe it's been an hour and 10 minutes. I'm taking the dough out and leave it on your counter for about 20 minutes before you try to roll it. You can preheat your oven, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Set two racks, set a lower rack all the way at the bottom and then set a rack at the middle. We're gonna just bake it for about 15 minutes on the lower rack. That's gonna kind of get our crust good, lock it in and then we'll leave it up. If we put it all the way at the bottom for the whole time, for my oven anyway, it's gonna burn it. So I don't wanna do that. So this is gonna take about 60 to 70 minutes of cooking. What we're gonna cook it in is a spring form pan. The ingredients that I prepared here fit, fit this fairly well. If you have a different size, you might have you might have a little bit left over of the filling or you might actually not have enough. It's very hard to remove your pie from here, so you actually wanna, you wanna reverse it. Then just really, really grease this, the inside of this really well. If you think you're using too much, you're probably not using enough because you wanna be able to like get this off with nothing will ruin it. You don't want your pie to break apart or anything. I got flour, lots of flour here. Just like bench flour you're gonna need because you don't want it to really stick here. We wanna be able to just get it off easily after we roll it out and put it in our spring form pan. This is a hundred year old rolling pin. It's my uh, wife's grandmother's, or great grandmother's. So I'm just gonna kind of flatten it out this way. Turn it, if at any time you're sticking, just pop it up and just put more flour underneath it. I have just a little kind of scraper here that works really well. Works better than the metal one. Some people will roll this out with, you know, you could use sheets of parchment paper or wax paper, that would help you too. Well, we'll do it the old fashioned way. and it's rolling fairly easily. You'll, you'll see if it's too cold, it, it will just start breaking apart a lot. And don't worry if it does break apart, you can do, we can do patchwork and we wanna roll it to about a quarter inch thick. As it gets bigger, you can you know, just use your card here to just check, see if it's all okay. All right, this is our thickness right here. It's about a solid quarter inch. We're gonna transfer our dough into our pan. Like that. If I have flour on my nose, I'm sorry. All right, so we're gonna go right on top. Just like that, just try to like, let it, let it flow in there loosely, very loosely in there. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna pick up the dough and then push it in. Okay, and then just go all the way around and then we'll fill it up. If you have any, spots that are whole, there's a hole in it. And I do have one right here, I'll show you. Right there, see that? All right, I'll just take some of it, I'll do a little patchwork. And that's, it's, you're, it's really as simple as that. You can knock off the sides here now. See how much extra I have here? And I even have the other ball, so we have plenty here. I could probably use this for the lattice and it'll be enough. We're, we're looking really good there. That's perfect for a non-professional pie maker. I worked in a bakery when I was a kid, but they wouldn't let me anywhere near baking the pies. Yeah, and I think we'll be good just with that dough. So that leftover dough can be used for something else. I'm gonna just roll this out and we're gonna cut lattices and you can cut these thin, thick, you can do whatever you want. If you do want a full cover, then you got, then you got enough dough. So that's, that's kind of the thing. All right, I'm gonna cut about one inch thick strips and I'm gonna use just a flat edge. You can see I'm really measuring <laughs> to get an exact. For baking it, I have a baking sheet and a wire rack. From greasing the pan like that, and especially where you, where we, how we flip the bottom, a lot of times it can leak through. This will prevent that. Not prevent it, but it will catch anything that does leak through. You could use a spatula or two just to kind of level this out. You want to level it all out. All right, so I have my lattice over here and I had enough filling because I, you know, I didn't want to overfill here. I filled up this one, look at this. You know, this one's for you. This one is for you, the chef. What did I do this for? I did this for another thing. Oh, I did it for the baked mac and cheese, the same thing. All right, so for the lattice, I'm gonna do about an inch, basically an inch apart. And I know I'm not, I don't have a lot of skills when it comes to this. But. All right, and then just push it in all, all the sides to connect it all. And if you, you know, if you're a little dry, you can 
just push it. Um, you can just use a little bit of water on your hands and just underneath and then just press it together and it'll stick. I also have an egg here and I just put like one teaspoon of water in there and I, and I beat it together and I'm gonna do the whole top. This is gonna make it look nicer. I'm not, you know, being that careful here about getting it inside the middle, it's okay. You know how I know? I just made one the other day. We're gonna bake it in the oven, bottom rack for 15 minutes, then bring it up to the top, not to the top, to the middle rack, okay? We have two racks. It's gonna take a total time of about 60 to 70 minutes. If this thing starts really browning after about 35 minutes, tent it with foil and continue to cook. Can check to see if it's done just by putting a toothpick through it. And you go through and it'll be pretty much clean. Even if there's some stuff on there, you just don't want it to be like really, really wet. Now this is the one I did today and then this is the one from the other day. You can see the cross section now of the stuff. I heat it up just a little bit. I already know what, what you think, but. I love it. You love it, right? Yeah. I do too. Mmm. So good. That is delicious. That one is actually gonna be for Easter. So what do you think, buddy? Um, well, there's not really much to think about. It's really, it tastes really good. Very, um, like, um, I don't think I would have ever heard of this yeah. if it wasn't for today. Um, nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. Thanks, I, buddy. Because I love the meat and I love pie. Mm. Do you want to come back? <laughs> we got to eat. We got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Special thanks to Patreon producers Chris Whalen, Steve Winitsky, Paul Walter Hauser, Elizabeth Shaw, Joe Hardage, John Andolino, Kenneth Parker, Matt Fisher, Tom Branca, Mike Tamburino, Matthew Amore, Richard P. Buonvanek, Alex Eckleberry, Andrew Juhas, Paul Batman, Patrick Lang, John Kelly, Jonathan Papini, Ronnie Mask, Trevor, JB, Monica Tarot, Josh Avon, Ed Calamag, Daryl Crone, Andy, Pedro Basso, Frank Crum, and Patricia Siefkin.